Hello everyone. Welcome to this quick video presentation that we put together for the Perl Economizer Controller installation, wiring, and setup. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, because it is a Pelican Perl Economizer Controller, it only works with Pelican thermostats. Your options in terms of compatible thermostats are your TS200, TS200H, TS250, or TS250H. Those are your four options. And of course, before getting started, we want to make sure that our unit is de-energized and the panel has been locked out. That way we're making sure we're being safe. OK, so the first step you want to do is take the faceplate off of those thermostats. You should see the wiring module here. You're going to want to go ahead and loosen those terminals and remove that module. And then gently push that into your Perl economizer controller at which point you're going to install a jumper between your R and R sub C. And once that's been done, you're going to go ahead and tighten those R, C, and D terminals. Back at the thermostat, you have your R, C, and D terminals here. You want to go ahead and wire those up, either with existing wire or new wire. You just want to make sure you know which wire is which, because you are going to be pulling those and connecting those to the terminals on your Perl Economizer controller. In terms of the physical installation of the controller, it's going to go either inside your unit or a watertight location. The only thing that you want to make sure of is that it is in a serviceable location and your control wiring is easily accessible. In terms of your outside air probe, you have two options, one being mounting it inside of a PVC enclosure right next to your outside air intake or using your nylon mount that comes with the controller and mounting it directly inside the economizer air intake hood. That's the physical installation. Next, we're going to talk about the wiring. The controller itself has three terminals, your right terminal here, your left top terminal, and your left bottom terminal. We'll first talk about the right terminal. This is in regards to your actual unit and whether it's a conventional or a heat pump, conventional being heating by gas or electric. Here are your terminals and what they mean. And this is what it looks like for a heat pump, basically the same thing, the only difference being your W for a heat pump is a reversing valve instead of your heating stage one, and your W2 is auxiliary heat as opposed to your heating stage two for a conventional. Moving on to our left top terminal, this is in regards to our actuator, if you have a VFD, an exhaust fan, or a spring return actuator. So the first thing we'll talk about is the actuator itself. You want to go ahead and wire that to your A1, which is your economizer actuator output, and your S1, which is the actuator feedback. And then you also want to make sure that it's connected to the same power source that your Perl is connected to. If you have a VFD, this is the way you're going to wire it. It goes straight into A2, which is specifically for your VFD. It's going to share the same common as your Perl, and you're going to connect the fan enable to your G on your right terminal, basically saying once the unit is set to turn on, go ahead and turn on that VFD so it could control the fan. And lastly, you have either an exhaust fan or a spring return actuator, these get wired directly into your E terminal. And it's basically saying once your economizer is energized, either your exhaust fan is going to be energized or your spring return actuator is going to be energized. Lastly is our left bottom terminal. This is in regards specifically to our temperature probes. However, you could also use it for um, an alarm or occupancy sensors. We'll talk about occupancy sensors briefly in the next slide. Your supply air temperature and outside air temperature are standard options. Um, and your return air temperature is optional. So in the scenario here, we have our occupancy sensors. And as you can see, they have it wired to the return air temperature terminal here. You could theoretically wire it to your supply air temperature or your outside air temperature. However, because we're talking about an economizer, we need those two spaces open for economizing. So in this scenario, it would be wired to your return air temperature terminals. Okay, once all that's done, we're going to go ahead and set up the controller. That's done in three steps. The first one being the verification of your status lights. Second being the verification of the actuator movement. And the third being your one-touch configuration or and calibration. 
So here are the status lights that you may encounter. This is the one you want to shoot for, a solid green light on your status light one here. If you see any of these other ones, go ahead and look through what it may potentially mean and fix the issue. Once it's fixed, we're going to go ahead and move on to the second step, which is checking our actuator movements. Assuming you have that solid green light, the first thing you want to do is check your volts, and it should be outputting two volts when it first starts, which is the minimum uh, closed position for the economizer. Once that's been verified, go ahead and press the move button. Your status light one is going to begin flashing green, meaning that the economizer is now opening to 100% open, and it will be outputting 10 volts. Once that's been verified, you can press the move button again, and it will begin closing again, which is shown by your status light two flashing blue. And you can press that as many times as you see necessary to verify actuator movement. Assuming you still have that green status light, you could go ahead and press the test button, which point you'll see your status light start blinking, green for one, blue for two. About 60 seconds in, your economizer damper is going to begin closing. Your status light two is going to begin flashing blue. If at any point it turns to flashing green and starts opening, go ahead and press that move button to where it's flashing blue again, so that way it closes to its fully closed position. After about 30 seconds of being fully closed, your status light one is going to begin flashing green, meaning that it's now going to its fully open position. Once it's hit that point, you should now have a solid green light on your status light one, meaning normal operation. If at any point during the process, you have a red light for your status light two, you need to look into what the issues may be based on whether it's solid or blinking and its pattern, and you want to go ahead and address those. Once you get the normal solid green light on your status light one, you could go ahead and restart the test. OK, so let's talk about the different parameters that you could actually set within Pelican's web portal. Uh, these three height limit temperature, differential limit and fixed enthalpy limit. We'll talk on the next slide, but I'll talk more on the other ones here on this slide. Variable damper, if it's on, you want it to modulate. If it's off, it's either going to fully open or fully closed. Your damper voltage when it's open. Your damper voltage when it's fully closed. Your minimum damper position, this is in regards if you're just ventilating, uh, providing no cooling or heating, just the fan. Whether or not you want to track your damper position, Demand ventilation would be picked if you have a thermostat with an integrated CO2 sensor and you want the economizer to modulate to meet those levels. Your VFD speeds for cooling, heating, and ventilation. And then what you actually have connected to your sensors for T1, T2, and T3, the default being supplier temperature, return air temperature, and outside air temperature. But like we had talked about earlier, if you want, you can have alarms there, a temperature monitor, or an occupancy sensor. OK, so now let's talk about the three that will affect the operation of the economizer. You have your high limit shutoff, your activation differential, or also known as your minimum temperature differential, and then your fixed enthalpy limit. The high temperature limit, if you actually set this, for instance, this is set to 70 degrees, you're saying if the outside air temperature is greater than 70 degrees, the economizer is going to go to minimum position. If you leave it unset, the system is going to automatically adjust that high limit based on the room temperature. So based on the room temperature, it will determine what temperature this should be. Um, and if the outside air temperature uh, just goes above that temperature, then it will go to minimum position. For your temperature differential, this is basically telling it to be enabled if your outside air temperature is, in this case, two degrees or more. Uh, or two degrees less than your room temperature. So if your room temperature is 75 and your outside air temperature is 73 or lower, then the economizer is going to be enabled. And that this should be uh, determined based off of the climate zone that you're in. Lastly, we have our fixed enthalpy limit, either yes or no. If you say it's yes, the economizer is only going to be activated if your outside air enthalpy is below 28 BTUs per pound, or if you're at a higher elevation, whatever your enthalpy is at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. 
So with those parameters configured, the economizer is going to operate as such. If the outside air temperature is below the high limit changeover, below the room temperature by the amount of degrees chosen for that differential, which in this case would be two degrees, and above the target discharge temperature of 55 degrees, which we always want for our supplier temperature, right? The damper is going to open fully to 100%. Now, in that scenario, if your outside air temperature is below your supplier temperature target of 55 degrees, the damper is going to modulate to maintain that 55 degree temperature supply air. And then in terms of mechanical cooling, uh, whenever there is a call for cooling, the mechanical cooling is going to be inhibited uh, to allow the economizer controller to provide all the necessary cooling. And it's going to monitor that room temperature and how quickly it's going to set point. If it's taking a long time, it'll go ahead and turn on the mechanical cooling to accompany the economizer. And of course, once the outside air temperature goes above that high limit shutoff, it'll go to minimum position and it will be only mechanical cooling. These are the different kinds of faults that you can encounter. You can see here, these are for your temperature probes. In terms of your, your damper position, there's four different ones that you could encounter. Not economizing, meaning that it's attempting uh, to open, or it's not opening when attempting to provide outside air. Economizing when not needed, meaning it's open when it should be closed. Excess outdoor air, meaning it's open more than it should be, and it won't close or not modulating, meaning it will not modulate to the correct position. You also have your economizer not operational, which is a failure of the economizer, um, and then a cool slash heat failure, meaning that your unit is not being able to heat or cool the space to meet the set point. Last thing I wanna talk about are the different ventilation options that you can do. The first one being continuous ventilation. In this mode, you're always gonna be delivering outside air continuously to the space. In this situation, your thermostat schedule would be set to on during all schedule times. And whenever the fan's running, the economizer is going to be open to the configured minimum damper position that we had discussed earlier, the default being 10%. Second is your scheduled occupied ventilation. Very similar to item one, uh, the schedule is adjusted to only provide ventilation during scheduled hours of operation. So for this mode, the schedule has to have its fan set to auto during non-occupied hours. Third one is the temporary ventilation. So for this one, the rate of outdoor air provided to a space uh, can be reduced by setting an hourly fan circulation time with the schedule for the fan set to auto. So in this mode, the higher ventilation is going to be provided for the configured number of minutes that you set for each hour with no ventilation during the remaining portion. So if you set it for 10 minutes, it will run for 10 minutes. And for the remaining 50 minutes of that hour, it will not run. In order to comply with California Title 24 code, the average rate needs to be equal or greater than the required ventilation for the space. Next one is your occupant sensor ventilation. This is if you have an occupancy sensor, you can set the schedule for the fan to on um, with the fan being in auto during unoccupied times. So in this mode, the ventilation is only going to occur when people are present. And you could also set a minimum hourly ventilation time which will override when the fan circulation time has been set. So to comply with California Tile 24, the fan circulation time needs to be set to a minimum of 30 minutes. So if the fan does become energized during uh, the space being occupied, it needs to run for at least 30 minutes. Next is a pre-occupancy ventilation. This is the one hour period before the building is normally occupied. You would just create that by setting the fan to on one hour before. And during that time, the ventilation is going to be delivered and the economizer will be in its minimum ventilation position. And then lastly, you have demand ventilation if your thermostat has an integrated CO2 sensor. For this, the ventilation is going to be provided when your CO2 level exceeds 800 parts per million. The ventilation is going to start by turning on and having the fan to a minimum damper position. As your CO2 levels begin to rise, the damper is going to open to 100%. Uh, with its goal being to maintain 1,000 parts per million. So it's going to stay open as long as it needs to to get it down to 1,000 parts per million, at which point it will start closing and maintain that set point. And then during that time, your supply air temperature is going to be restricted so as not to exceed 
the active thermostat set point. So one thing to note is you want to keep your set points for your cooling and heating active. So that way you stay away from overheating or overcooling the space. For instance, if your economizer is 100% open and it's 80 degrees outside or 100% open and degrees outside, we're going to have an issue if you don't have those set points on the thermostat set for heating and cooling. And then just a quick note, if you have a thermostat with an integrated CO2 sensor, get an additional fault for the CO2 sensor and whether or not um, you are having an issue with it and it failed. That is the end of our video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'll also be uploading some Pelican uh, install guides and wiring configurations for your reference. I look forward to teaching you again. Take care.